Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to part two of Mental Health Awareness Month slash Depression Awareness Month. So first of all, before we get anything started into this depression, which is part two, you have to be able to understand it first. And I've got my iPad right here with me, right here. It's on right now. Um, seven, nine types, nine types, and meds. I thought it said seven, nine types. Nine types of depression and how to recognize them. So, first, before, we're, before we get started into anything, you have to understand depression before I get into the whole stages, before the whole nine types, before the whole nine types of depression. I have to get in to let you guys understand what depression really is first. So without further ado, let's get started. So, understanding depression. Everyone goes through periods of deep sadness and grief. These feelings usually fade away within a few days or weeks, depending on the circumstances. But profound sadness that lasts more than two weeks and affects your ability to function may be a sign of depression. Some of the common symptoms of depression are deep feelings of sadness, dark moods, feelings of worthless or hopelessness, appetite changes, sleep changes, lack of energy, and inability to concentrate, difficulty gain through your normal activities, lack of interest in things you used to enjoy, withdrawing from friends, preoccupation with death of, or thoughts of self-harm. Depression affects everyone differently and you might, not only, you might not only have some of these symptoms, you may also have other symptoms that aren't listed. Here keep in, here, keep in mind that's, that it's also normal to have some of these symptoms from time to time without having depression. But if they start to impact your day to life, they may be the result of depression. There are many types of depression. While they share some common symptoms, they also have some key differences. Here's a look at nine types of depression and how they affect people. Here we go. First one we're gonna start off with is major depression. It's the first one. <clears throat> major depression is also known as major depressive disorder. Classic depression or unpiolar or unpiolar depression. It's fairly common about 16.2 million adults in the US have experienced at least one major depressive episode. People with major depression experience symptoms most of the day, every day, like many mental health conditions. It has little to do with what's happening around you. You can have a loving family, tons of friends, and have a dream job. You can have the kind of life that others envy and still have depression. Even if there's no obvious reason for your depression, that doesn't mean it's not real or that you can simply tough it out. It's a severe form of depression that causes symptoms such as disobediency, gloom or grief, difficulty sleeping or sleeping too much, lack of energy and fatigue, loss of appetite or overeating, unexplained aches and pains, loss of interest in formerly pleasurable activities, lack of concentration, memory problems and inability to make decisions. Feelings of worthlessness or hopelessness, constant worry and anxiety, thoughts of death, self-harm, or suicide. These symptoms can last weeks or even months. Some people might have a single episode of major depression while others experience it throughout their life. Regardless of how long its symptoms last, major depression can cause problems in your relationships and daily activities. Number two, persistent depression. Persistent depressive disorder is depression that lasts for two years or more. It's also called dys dysthymia or chronic depression. Persistent depression might not feel as intense as a major depression, but it can still strain relationships and make daily tasks difficult. Some symptoms of persistent depression include deep sadness or hopelessness, low self-esteem or feelings of Idequency, lack of interest in things you once enjoyed, appetite changes, changes to sleep patterns or low energy, concentration and memory problems, difficulty functioning at school or work, inability to feel joy even at happy occasions, social withdrawal. Though it's a long-term type of depression, the severity of symptoms can become less intense for some for months at a time before worsening again. Some people also have episodes of major depression before or while they have persistent depressive disorder. This is called double depression. 
Persistent depression lasts for years at a time, so people with this type of depression may start to feel their symptoms are just part of their normal outlook on life. Number three, manic depression or bipolar disorder. Manic, de manic depression consists of periods of mania or, hy or hypomania, where you feel very happy, alternating with episodes of depression. Manic depression is an outdated name for bipolar disorder. In order to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder, eye disorder, you have to experience an episode of mania that lasts for seven days or less if, hus if hospitalization is required. You may experience a depressive episode before or following the manic episode. Depressive episodes have the same symptoms as major depression, including feelings of sadness or emptiness, lack of energy, fatigue, sleep problems, trouble concentrating, decreased activity, decreased activity, loss of interest in formerly enjoyable activities, suicidal thoughts. Signs of a manic phase include high energy, reduced sleep, irritability, racing thoughts and speech, grandiose thinking, increased self-esteem and confidence, unusual, risky, and self-destructive behavior, feeling elevated, high, or ephrophic, ephrophic. In severe cases, Episodes can include hallucinations and delusions. Hypomania is a less severe form of mania. Mania! You can also have mixed episodes in which you have symptoms of both mania and depression. There are several types of bipolar disorder. Read more about them and how they're diagnosed. 4. Depressive... Sick... Sick... Piss... Why? How do you even pronounce this? Pissophis... I can't pronounce it, it's a tongue twister. Anyway, let's just let's just read this one. Some people with major depression also go through periods of losing touch with reality. This is also known as physaxis, which can involve hallucinations and delusions. Experiencing both of these together is known clinically as major depressive disorder with psychotic psychotic features. However, some providers still refer to those phenomena as depressive psychosis, psychosis, or psychotic depression. Excuse me? Hallucinations are when you see, hear, smell, taste, or feel things that aren't really there. An example of this would be hearing voices or seeing people who aren't present. A delusion is a closely held belief that's clearly false or doesn't make sense. But to some experiencing psych psychosis, all of these are all of these things are very real and true. Depression with psychosis can cause physical symptoms as well as including problems sitting still or slowed physical movements. Number five, we're halfway through this. Periental depression, which is clinically known as major depressive disorder with peripartum onset, occurs during pregnancy or within four weeks of childbirth. It's awesome. It's off, it's often called postpartum, per, postpartum depression, but that term only applies to this only applies to depression after giving birth. Perinatal depression can occur while you're pregnant. Hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy and childbirth can trigger changes in the brain that lead to mood swings, the lack of sleep, and physical discomfort that often accompanies pregnancy and having a newborn doesn't help either. Symptoms of periental depression can be as severe can be as severe as some as those of major depression and include sadness, anxiety, anger or rage, exhaustion, extreme worry about the baby's health and safety, difficulty caring for yourself or the new baby, thoughts of self-harm or harming the baby. Women who lack support or have had depression before are at increased risk of developing periental depression, but it can happen to anyone. Number six. Number six. Per Perimenstrual dysrochic disorder. Peri blah, 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 blah. Per Perimenstrual dysrophic disorder. PMDD is a severe form of perimenstrual syndrome. PMS. Well, PMS symptoms can be both physical and Physiological. Physiological. PMDD symptoms tend to be mostly 
physiological. These physiological symptoms are, mo are more severe than those associated with PMS. For example, some women might feel more emotional in the days leading up to their period. Okay, we're getting we're getting we're getting a little too into detail. Okay, but someone with PMDD might experience a level of depression and sadness that gets in the way of day-to-day -day functions. Other possible symptom, other possible symptoms of PMDD include cramps, bloating, and breast tenderness, headaches, joint and muscle pain, sadness and despair, irritability and anger, extreme mood swings, food cravings or binge eating, panic attacks or anxiety. Lack of energy, trouble focusing, and sleep problems. Similarly to periental depression, PMDD is believed to be related to hormone changes. Hormonal changes. Its symptoms often begin just after. I know how to pronounce that. Oval ovulation, and start to ease up once you get your period. Some women dismiss PMDD as just a bad case of PMS, but PMDD can become very severe and include thoughts of suicide. Number seven, seasonal depression. This one actually kind of confused me because I was like, seasonal depression? Does it mean like October, November, December, like the fall months? Does it mean like December, January, February, and March? And does it mean April, May, June, July, August, and September? I don't know, but we're about to find out. Okay, here we go. Seasonal depression. Oh my god, here we go again. I'm gonna I'm gonna burp again. Sorry guys, I just got I just got a really bad case of uh, chest tightness and burps tonight. So I'm sorry if I'm kinda slow with this tonight. But um let's read. Seasonal depression. Seasonal depression, also called seasonal affective disorder and clinically known as major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern, is depression that's related to certain to certain seasons for most people, it tends to happen during the winter months. Symptoms often begin in the fall, as days start to get shorter. As yeah, as days start to get shorter and continue through the winter, they include social withdrawal, increased need for sleep, weight gain, daily feelings of sadness, hopelessness, or unworthiness. Seasonal depression may get worse as the season progresses and can lead to suicidal thoughts. Once spring rolls around, symptoms tend to improve. This might be related to changes in your bodily rhythms and response to the increase in natural light. Situational depression. Situational depression, clinically known as adjustment disorder with depressive, with depressed mood, looks like major depression in many respects, but it's brought on by specific events or situations such as the death of a loved one, a serious illness or other life-threatening event, going through divorce or child custody issues, being in, being in emotionally or physically abusive relationships, being unemployed or facing serious financial difficulties, facing extensive legal troubles. troubles. Of course, it's normal to feel sad and anxious during events like these, even to withdraw from others for a bit, but situational depression happens when these feelings start to feel out of proportion with the triggering, with the triggering, evi that, with the triggering event and interfere with your daily life. Situational depression symptoms tend to start within three months of the initial event and can, in, and can include frequent crying, sadness and hopelessness, anxiety, appetite changes, difficulty sleeping, aches and pains, lack of energy and fatigue, inability to concentrate, and social withdrawal again. Last one, atypical depression. This one I've heard a lot, and I've heard it's one of the worst ones. But this is the main event one. Atypical depression refers to depression as that temporarily goes away in response to positive events. Your doctor might refer to it as major depressive disorder with atypical features. Despite its name, atypical isn't unusual or rare. It also doesn't mean that it's more or less serious than other types of depression. Having atypical depression can be particularly challenging because you may not always seem depressed to others or yourself, but it can also happen during an episode of major depression. It can occur with persistent depression as well. Other symptoms of atypical depression can include increased appetite and weight gain, and weight gain disordered eating, poor body image, sleeping much more than usual, insomnia, had it before, I've had that before, heaviness in your arms, mild insomnia, not heavy insomnia, heaviness in your arms or legs that lasts an hour, 
or more a day. I have that in my chest. I have heaviness in my chest a lot. Feelings of rejection and sensitivity to criticism. Assorted aches and pains. How do I know which type I have? Okay, we're going to get to that later. First, I got to talk to you guys about something. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about from the very beginning of this, but I was going to wait till later in the video, is that I have atypical depression. It may not look like I have depression at all, but I do have depression. It's not bad depression. Don't be worried. It's not bad, but it is atypical. I do have atypical depression, but it's mild. It is mild. Not very mild, but it's mild. It's not. It's like medium. Medium depression. In, in between heavy and mild depression. So it can go into heavy sometimes and it can be mild sometimes. Right now my depression, I don't even notice it because it's so mild right now. But that could change and I could jinx it and I don't want to jinx it. But I just thought I'd let you guys know that and without further ado, let's get to this next part of the video. How do I know which type I have? If you think you might have any type of depression, it's important to follow up with a doctor. All depression types discussed in this article are treatable though it might take some time to find the right treatment for you. If you've had a previous bout of depression and think it might be happening again, see your, see your psychiatrist or other mental health professional right away. If you've never had depression before, start with your primary care. A physician, some symptoms of depression can be related to an underlying physical condition that, can, that should be addressed. Try to give your doctor as much information about your symptoms as you can, if possible, mention when you first noticed them, how they affected your daily life, any other mental health conditions you may have, any information about a history of mental illness in your family, all prescription and other over-the-counter medications you take, including supplements and herbs. It might feel uncomfortable, but try to tell your doctor everything. This will help them give you a more accurate diagnosis and refer you to the right type of mental health professional worried about the cost of mental health services worried about the cost of mental health services here are five ways to access therapy for every budget now here comes the big part i want you all all of you who have depression and i mean this 100% i'm talking to someone out here who is watching this who has really bad depression don't you dare don't you dare commit suicide. It's called seeking help. It's called psychiatrist. It's called... I'm getting a little tearing up here. Because depression, depression will make you do things that you don't want to do. And when it does it, when it takes you down that path, it will destroy you. I'm not kidding. I've been down that path. Fight it. Fight it. And here are some things about suicide prevention. If you don't do these, I will. I will make you do them. I will make a whole separate video if I hear any more talk about people not helping with suicide around the world. If I hear any more about people not giving enough awareness to depression, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be mad. I promise I'm going to be mad. But here's the last few things. If you think someone is at immediate risk of self-harm or hurting another person, call 911 or your local emergency number. Stay with the person until help arrives. Remove any guns, knives, medication, or other things that may cause harm. Listen, but don't judge. Argue, threaten, or yell. If you or someone you know is considering suicide, get help from a crisis or suicide prevention hotline. Try the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video, or tonight's video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked part two to this, smash the like button, turn the notification bell, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow for part three, which is anxiety tomorrow. And without further ado, y'all fight the depression, don't let it get the best of you,